All right, so working on <coughs> assignment five, continuing with it. Remember that we have our storyboard sketch that we're using as guidance for our storytelling. Uh, so far, I've gotten through the, the beginning stages. But the important thing to remember is that we've organized our Photoshop files into two different files. One is our assets file. So I'm going to open that up in Photoshop. And that's disorganized, lots of different components. I'll keep adding components as I need them. And the other is what's called our stage file, which is much cleaner. That's where our finished kind of clean frames go. <coughs> so, as you see here with my stage file, I only have four layers. But those four layers come out of manipulating various assets within my assets file. So because I think I have the beginning down, I want to do a quick animation test. Now you can always just do a, a do-it-yourself animation test this way because all the, the timeline tools I'll be showing you that we animate with, all they do is program this eyeball. They program it to turn on and off on certain layers at certain times. So I can always just do this to see how things are working. Right? And I can move it backwards. So how do I automate that? Well, what I do is I go to Window and Timeline. And usually in the Design Architecture, it'll open up at the bottom here. Then you're going to go to the window options of timeline and say, make frames from layers. You only ever do this on your stage. If you did this to your assets, it would make a frame for every single layer, which would be disastrous. All right. So this is only for your stage Photoshop file. So you make frames from layers, and then it's very simple. It's one blank background frame for my background layer, and then four actual frames. So the first thing you can do is you can drag that background white frame to the trash. Now we don't hit delete because if we hit delete it will actually delete the layer content. It won't delete the layer but it will delete everything from that layer's content, especially if it's not locked. So for instance, I'll show you a big no-no. If I didn't want this and I hit delete, what it just did is deleted that layer and all the content that was in there. So instead, whenever you want to remove a frame, you do it within the, the timeline window. Okay, next, you can set the timing on each frame, this little time signature underneath. And I like to select them all at once, so I click the first one, hold down Shift, click the last one, and then set a timing. My default timing is 0.3. You know, a little faster than three frames per second. It's a good way to test GIF animations. We don't want to run them 24 frames per second because we don't have that kind of time <laughs> to build movements. So we're basically doing keyframes and in-betweens. So if I play it, it can help me see little glitches. One little glitch is this shadow. that little edge of the can turns bright red on only the first frame. So I might decide to fix that. And I have a few ways I can fix that. Because I don't think I'll, it will be an issue moving forward in my panels. So this is how you can use the animation tests to and understand how they work together. All right, so if I go to frame one, I see, okay, that's layer one that's causing that problem. In layer two, that's not a problem anymore there. So what, do, what am I going to do? I'm going to take layer two. Usually I would, I would take all my frames and move them to the trash before I did this, but I'll show you why that's kind of an issue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is on layer two, I'm going to select all of this area, and I'm going to duplicate it, Command J. Now what that does is it adds a layer, and it will add that layer to every frame, even layer one. Does that make sense? Okay, then to clean it up, I'm going to say under the window options, flatten frames into layers. 
because I don't want to have a floating weird little thing. <laughs> so now, if I run it through, I won't have that glitch anymore. So there's some repairs you can make within your stage. But before I start bringing new layers in, because I don't want them to add to every frame, I have to remove these timeline frames by dragging them to the trash. And then just to make sure I don't get tempted to test my animation too much, I'm going to turn the window for timeline off. That gives me a little bit more space here. All right, so now looking at my storyboard, <coughs> I can decide to run this cycle as many times as I want. And notice that when I flattened into frames, it renamed them frame one, frame two, frame three, to frame four. So now I can go ahead and erase those layers and even the background. Because those are all I need. Okay, this is the, the last frame I had. <coughs> and if I wanted to make it more complicated with him drinking, um, I could. I could have it repeat, have his head go kind of up and down a few times, have his um, head kind of bobble, have him blink, not blink, but I'd also have to track the sun and keep the sun moving, and that would be pretty difficult. So this sun, remember I have an asset for each time that sun goes down, and I've given myself you know, that many steps, basically. So I want to keep with that. So now on my assets layer, I'm going to see what, what happens next. Well, I want to show that he's really swallowing. So this is the last. So he needs to raise his head and kind of swallow and then have an effect happen. So I go back to my assets. And I will turn on another texture fill. Change that up. I'm going to put the head up. I have the eyes closed. Let's see. Have a closed mouth, or maybe even have a semi-open mouth. Let's try that. All right. So I like that pose for the next frame. Now I go to my next group. The sun goes one more down, and yeah, that's it. Okay. So now how do I bring this over as a new frame? I use the magic wand, I'm on my top layer. I click within the, the zoomed frame. Do I wanna be zoomed out? Yes, I do, I'm not zooming in yet. But I could start maybe zooming in. So that might be what I think of for the next frame to make this moment more impactful when he's swallowing. Okay, and then I say layer, merge visible, but I hold down option. And then I hit Command C to copy just that square. Then I go to my stage. I'm on the top layer. I hit Command V to paste it in place. Aha. Ah, but then I have that, that problem again. <laughs> so let me fix that. I think it's in the texture fill group for number one. Yes, indeed. There it is. So I've got to turn that off. Deselect, get rid of this frame. All right, exact same thing, everything else the same. Layer, merge visible, hold down option while you do it. Copy, paste it in. So that's the change I want. So his head comes up a little bit faster. Uh, 
Oh, there's a little bit of neck stuff there I need to take care of. So troubleshooting as you go, scrutinizing your stage. See, this is my head up, head down, head down, head slightly down. Let me see, maybe I want a different. And what I like is we can kind of toggle between the frames. So it's here. Yeah, I think I'll go to here next. And let's close. Let's see. Close the eyes. Let's have a semi open mouth. Get everything else the same. Took care of the neck problem. Hold down option, layer, merge visible with option held down, copy, paste. So instead of this, I'm going to do this. Yeah, that works a little bit better. Because remember, I'm doing kind of a poor man's animation test here. Okay, now I'm going to start to zoom. So in order to zoom, first I deselect and I delete that copied layer. And I'm going to go from here eventually to here. But I don't want to make it all at once. That's kind of a, a jump cut. So I need to come up with a square in between these two. So I'm going to go to my marquee here. Let's go about there. Make sure it's within. I can turn my guides on with command semicolon and set my guide right at the edge so that this sticks to it. So that's one that I'm going to select inverse, edit fill with white. Put on a new layer. This is how I transition from one to the next. Okay. I'm going to put that between. So you see it goes from this to this to this. Okay. Now I want to go about that far again. <coughs> I like to use my guides here to make the steps really even. So I go about as far down because they're squares. I can zoom up a, or uh, speed up a little bit as I do it. My next square is going to start here. Hold down Shift. In there. Select Inverse. This is a mask. And fill with white. Next. You select, move that down on top of layer 29. New layer, go down maybe a little bit more, zoom in, here we go, hold down shift, I think that's going to get me there, select inverse, edit fill, white, alright, so this is all just to get different framing of your scene, then I don't need my guides anymore, so I hit command semicolon, and let's see how those travel. So, here's the most zoomed. Starts out here, goes to there. Nope, that's too much. <laughs> Move these in reverse order. There we go. Starts there, to there, to there, to there, to there. I might need one more between here and there. So let's see. Turn my guides back on. Only worried about these two steps. 